As a landscape and nature photographer, it's important to have a plan to protect this expensive camera gear when going out in harsh weather conditions. In the last video, you saw me use these Think Tank rain covers to cover up my camera gear while we were shooting in the rain and the snow. So in this video, I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about how I use these rain covers to protect my camera gear, not just in the rain, but in snow, in dust, and especially around sea spray. This rain cover has a couple of main features that make it specifically very handy for landscape and nature photographers. First things first, it has a nice big opening that is used to drape over the camera. And this front end has a adjustable Velcro strap <laughs> that makes it really easy to secure the entire unit to the lens hood or the front element of the camera. The next thing that also helps with securement is this hot shoe mount. The hot shoe mount attaches, of course, you know, onto the hot shoe. And this makes sure that even if the wind is blowing, the rain cover is not going to come off of your camera. The other thing that's also nice about this rain cover is that the end that's used to access the camera is cinchable. So if you don't want, if you want to fully seal everything off, you totally can. Just like that. And as you guys can probably tell, there's a transparent film on the back so that you can see your LCD screen while you're shooting. So I've been using these rain covers for a while now and over, I don't know, a couple of years, I've, I've grown to kind of have a love-hate relationship with them. The good thing about these rain covers is that it really does a good job and it really secures to the camera. So if I'm shooting in the wind and the rain, then I know for a fact that these things are not going to be blown away. Uh, but because it does such a good job at securing to the camera, it requires a lot of like faff is really the only way I can describe it. it. Just requires a lot of effort to set up. It's not super simple where you just throw it onto the camera and then you're good. It's very intricate, it has a lot of details and it requires a little bit of forethought in order to use it properly. The other thing that I really like <clears throat> about these rain covers is that they're adjustable. So if I really wanted to, I can use, hang on, we're gonna switch lenses real quick. We could use a super telephoto lens and the rain cover together. But first, we got some light and some fog kicking off back there. I'm gonna try and grab some super, not super telephoto shots, but some slightly telephoto shots of this fog and mist and the light on those mountain ranges back there. That looks quite good, actually. There we go, perfect. But as I was saying, sorry, uh, we can use this with our super telephoto lenses. And the rain covers do come in various sizing, sizes, but I got two smalls because, you know, I shoot with, a, with Sony cameras that are usually smaller and more lightweight when compared to the DSLRs. But even if I extend the, the lens super duper far, I still have enough material to cover the entirety of the camera, camera system that I'm using. The only problem is when shooting on with the wide angle lenses. Now you're left over with a bunch of leftover material that could very much easily get in your frame if you're not careful. So even if you secure the front ring like that, you still have all this excess material that can easily flap up in the wind and cover your lens. And there have been a couple of times where I've been doing a time lapse and I've walked away from this and the wind or whatever flips up, flips up, covers the camera, and there goes my time lapse and I didn't even bother to check it. So that is a little bit of a downside about these uh, rain covers. 
But you know, if you're not the crazy photographer like I am who's running around with three different camera bodies on every single shoot, then you should be fine if you're just using uh, you know, one camera, one lens each time, and you're really just dialing in your shot to focus on what you're shooting, then having all this excess material uh, isn't a drawback because you can always just make sure that you kind of scrunch things up while you're shooting and make sure that all the excess material doesn't get into your front element. You could even get an extra rubber band if you wanted to, and this is what I probably should do, get an extra rubber band to just have it on standby to secure to the camera or to the rain cover, just so I can get rid of some of that excess material when doing time lapses. And another pro for this Think Tank rain cover is that, yes, indeed, it is very, very packable and it folds up nicely and it stores very well. Uh, pretty much in any camera bag, because it can get so flat, you can really tuck it into any any pocket that you might you might please. And even though it is you know small and packable, uh, it's very very durable as well. The plastic is you know rip stop, so you're not going to have to worry about you know things accidentally ripping and tearing, and then water getting through any of those openings. Uh, it's more durable than, you know, like let's say that you're one of those photographers that uses a shower cap, it's more durable than that. Or if you use one of those um, plastic rain covers that are more like very thin plastic, um, you know, it, it, this is going to be much more durable. The only drawback uh, about having this heavier duty material is that it does add a little bit of weight uh, when compared to a shower cap and those regular plastic uh, rain covers. So yeah, like I mentioned earlier, this rain cover is competing with a few other rain covers on the market. The first is just the cheap uh, you know, shower cap that you can get from any hotel or any you know, uh, CVS or in our case if you live in Hawaii, any Long's drugstore. Uh, obviously, it's cheaper if you go with the shower cap. The only problem is that sometimes it doesn't have enough material to cover all of your big, super long telephoto lenses. So, you know, if you're somebody that shoots with a variety of different, uh, different lenses, then it's going to be a little difficult just using the shower cap. It's not gonna be as versatile. Uh, it's also not gonna be as durable. And this kind of goes for the other product that the, cam that the uh, rain cover is competing against as well, which is those um, basically plastic bags for your camera, but it has one tiny little drawstring to cinch to the front of your camera, and that's it. Um, again, it's you know, gonna be more lightweight and more portable, both the shower cap and the plastic bag, but you're going to lose the durability of this ripstop plastic, and you're also not going, it's not going to be as secure. One big gust of wind coming from the backside with those plastic bags, and whoop, all of the camera gear is now exposed. Uh, and that's another thing too about the shower cap as well, is that if you were to put a shower cap on the lens or on the camera and you know a big gust of wind blows, then now you're just becoming a polluter of the environment that you're shooting in. So uh, having something that's nice and secure to the camera, uh, like how the Think Tank has, it has basically two securement points, one for the lens and of course, again, one for the hot shoe. So it's really helpful and uh, it definitely outperforms those other two products. The last product that you may be considering is the, the Peak Design rain cover. It basically looks like a camera sleeve. I did take a look at that before ultimately ending up with this one. Basically what I found was that the reviews kind of say that the Peak Design is like a nice uh, rain cover, but it's almost too slick and too um, compact for the camera. So the benefit of having all this extra material on, on the Think Tank is that you can reach your hands up in there, control your cameras, and also see what you're shooting. 
the, the Peak Design looked like it was so compact and had so much material and the material was super thick as well that you couldn't really access and maneuver the camera, which is kind of the whole point when you're going out to shoot. Uh, so that is the one drawback of the Peak Design that the Think Tank um, kind of beats out. If you are somebody who does a lot of lightweight lightweight hiking and backpacking and every single ounce matters and let's say you're not shooting with those super long telephoto lenses i would say go for the shower cap or the plastic bag because it is going to save you a little bit of weight but if you're somebody like me that does you know mostly like easy to moderate level hiking is not an extreme backpacker and kind of just goes up to these walk-up locations most of the time um, you know this thing is not super duper heavy it's manageable it's still packable so it doesn't take up a lot of space in the camera bag and overall it's just a, a really good product all right so in conclusion this rain cover from think tank it just gets the job done it's a you know very nice small and compact solution to make sure that you cover up your camera gear when shooting in those harsh conditions like rain snow sea spray dust um, even if you have a camera with weather sealing it's always nice to have that extra layer of protection just to be sure that you're not um, you know you're not going to break your camera uh, it does have some minor quirks like the excess material and the fact that it's not the most lightweight solution out there but those quirks are very minor and quite easy to deal with as long as you're paying attention just another quick gear video for you guys this week let me know what you guys want me to look at next i might just i don't know pick some random thing in my photography toolkit just like how i did this week um, but yeah stay tuned for the next travel video and we'll see you guys yeah i guess in one week <laughs> hit the like button comment below and subscribe if you aren't ready and yeah we'll see you guys in one week peace out